Then there's another way of beginning, like the Shulchan Aruch begins, let's start from the first mitzvah in the morning. Rambam doesn't do that either. Rambam is thinking, what, what orientation, what thinking must you have in place before you start to do all the other mitzvahs? First, you got to get your head on straight. Then we'll talk about how to conduct your life daily. And in that sense, Rambam is a Chabad Chosid. Start with the mind. Get to know. Then you will love. Then you will do. So the Rambam begins all 613 mitzvahs with the mitzvah to get to know God. Get to know him. Because to know him is to love him. So his first volume, or his first section, is called Sefer Hamada. The first thing is what you need to know. So what's interesting is that some other writers, authorities, begin with the mitzvah to believe. The first mitzvah is to have faith, to have belief in God. I mean, how do you start without that? Rambam decides you can't use that as your first mitzvah. In fact, you can't even consider it a mitzvah. Because mitzvah means a commandment. How can there be a commandment to believe in a commander? This makes sense? If you don't already believe in a commander, who's giving the commandment? So when you say commandment, you're already assuming that there's a commander. So believing in a commander is not a mitzvah. It's not a commandment. It's the commander. That we believe as a default position. Knowing that there is a commander, we can start listening and hearing and observing his commandments. So we believe in God instinctively, not because there's a commandment. We can't have God commanding that we believe in him. Because if you don't believe in him, who's commanding? So what is the first mitzvah? The God you believe in, you have to get to know. Fantastic statement. It is not enough to believe in God. See, that already makes Judaism unique. There is no religion that advocates knowing God. They all advocate faith. Faith, belief, trust not knowledge. In fact, most religions actually dumb down their, uh, their followers, probably because it's easier. You don't have to have answers. You don't have to satisfy the mind. You just believe. The result of that is if all I'm expecting is for you to believe and you don't believe, what consequences can there be?
See, if you're working with intelligence and a person says, I don't believe, then you reason with him and you convince him that not believing is wrong. It's not intelligent. It can't be true. So if someone says, I don't believe, well, then get to work, educate him. But if there's no educating, there's no knowing, there's no understanding, there's only the obligation to believe. And a person says, but I don't believe. So what is the reaction and the response? You're gonna to go to hell. What else can they say? Or we'll burn you at the stake. You're a heretic. You're an infidel. So basing a religion entirely on faith usually brings violent repercussions. So the, the threat of punishment and the dumbing down, you don't have to understand. That, that's what has be, become of religions. The Rambam says, we don't go that way, we don't do it that way, that's not right. The first thing is, you got to get to know God. If you don't know him, well, get to know him. Well, I don't know how to get to know him. There are rabbis and teachers and 